Could changing how fast you eat your food help you lose weight or even gain weight if you want to? Today I am sharing scientific studies on how eating faster versus slower impacts your hunger and your weight. Hey there, I'm Mish and I am a full-time researcher with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other people's studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And today I will be focusing on two meta-analyses, which are the gold standard of studies that go over a bunch of other studies. And the first will be on how eating speed relates to obesity and being overweight. And then the second one will be on how changing your eating speed actually changes how much you eat. Then at the end, I will give you some practical tips for how you can apply this information to your life. And the first study I'll be going over today is a meta-analysis of 23 studies looking at how eating speed predicts people's weight and their risk of being obese. And they found that the fastest eaters tended to be two BMI points higher than the slowest eaters. So people who ate faster tended to weigh quite a lot more than people who ate slower. And they also found that being a fast eater doubled people's chances of being obese. So it seems like there's this really strong relationship where eating faster predicts twice as much risk of being obese. So there's a strong relationship between eating speed and obesity here. But of course, these studies are correlational, they are cross-sectional, so we can't know for sure which direction that goes. So it could be that once people become obese, then they start eating faster for whatever reason. So the next set of studies I will go over are from a meta-analysis that actually looks at experimental manipulations of eating speed. So where experimenters actually get people to eat at different speeds and see what happens. And this meta-analysis looked at 22 studies that changed people's eating rates through a variety of methods. So some of these studies just used instructions where they told people to eat faster versus slower, whereas other studies told people to chew more, so to chew more times to get them to eat slower. Other studies actually changed the composition of the foods such that some of them took a long time to eat, whereas some of them could be eaten more quickly, despite having the same exact energy density and nutrient composition and everything. So the same exact foods, just one is hard and one is soft. And then... Another way that researchers manipulated eating speed was to have people eat with a spoon versus a straw. And then my favorite one were studies that actually changed how fast a container refilled that participants were eating out of. And importantly, the meta-analysis found that none of the effects I'm about to tell you about differed between these different strategies for changing people's eating speed. So really all that mattered in the end was the fact that these strategies did succeed at changing people's eating speed, which was then recorded by the studies for how fast or slow people were taking in these calories. And across these 22 studies, the meta-analysis found that when people were made to eat faster, they ate more calories. So conversely, when people were made to eat slower, they ate fewer calories than normal. And this was not driven by running out of time or anything or running out of food. So it wasn't the case that people who ate slower just ran out of time and weren't able to eat as much as they wanted. But rather what happened here is that when people ate quickly, they just wanted to eat more food before they felt like they were full and satiated and wanted to stop. Whereas when people ate more slowly, they decided on their own that they did not feel like eating anymore after fewer calories than people who ate faster. So for whatever reason, eating faster made people eat more calories. And you may be thinking, well, does this effect actually really matter? Because it could be that if you eat faster, and eat more calories, then you should stay full for longer and not need to eat as soon, and therefore it shouldn't really have any long-term effects on how much you eat, right? Well, the researchers found that hunger did not differ by eating slow versus fast. So people who ate fast, even though they ate more calories, did not end up any less hungry later on. So when people ate fast, they ate more, but they didn't get any extra benefits of feeling less hungry as a result of that extra eating. So what these studies suggest is that eating more slowly helps you eat fewer calories in a way that doesn't actually make you feel more hungry later on. So you feel just as satisfied from fewer calories when you eat slower. So the next question you may be asking is why does this happen? Why does eating slower help you eat less and make you feel more satisfied? Well, some studies have found that eating more slowly increases the release of satiety hormones. So hormones that help you to feel full and satisfied and tell you to stop eating. And studies have also found that eating slower slows down your gastric emptying. So it keeps the food in your stomach for longer, which helps you to feel full for longer, which will help you to not feel as hungry, even if you're eating fewer calories. And an interesting hypothesis from several other studies is that eating slower helps you have more oral exposure to the taste of food. So when you're eating quickly, all those good tastes are just kind of going through your mouth really quickly and you don't get as much 
long exposure to those nice rewarding tastes. Whereas when you eat more slowly, you essentially can get more dopamine out of each bite because it stays in your mouth longer and you get to taste it longer. So you get more of that reward happening for a longer period of time. And what other studies have found is that when you hold eating speed constant, but you manipulate oral exposure to the food, you find that when people get more exposure to the food, so more ability to taste the food essentially, they will actually choose to eat less. So this suggests that one reason why eating slower helps us to eat less is because we get to enjoy more of the good flavors for the same amount of food. And another reason why eating slower helps us to eat less is because other studies have found that taking more bites or chewing things more or taking more sips actually makes people eat less. So even again, when you control for eating speed, but you have people chew more, that causes them to eat less. So you get a double benefit if you're also eating slower and chewing more is what all these studies suggest. So if you wanna get the most bang for your buck in terms of feeling satisfied for the same amount of food, you should try eating more slowly and taking smaller bites or chewing it more or both. And I bet that these types of eating speed benefits are gonna be most impactful for people who do intuitive eating like I do, where we eat just based on physiological hunger signals and not based on social conventions or times of the day or psychological appetite. So like, oh, that thing sounds good even though I'm not hungry. So for those of us who do intuitive eating, I think that these eating speed effects will be especially important because so much of our satisfaction and satiation is based on these physiological signals like satiety hormones rather than just, I always serve this portion on my plate and therefore I'm gonna finish it. And if you don't know what intuitive eating is, I have a bunch of videos on that. There's a lot of good studies on it. Check out a lot in this playlist or you can just search intuitive eating in the search bar on my channel. And the two main takeaways from this video are, number one, if you are trying to lose weight, then it might help to eat slower, according to these results. And the second takeaway is that if you are trying to gain weight, then these results also suggest that eating faster might help you. So eating speed could be an easy way to sort of nudge things in the direction that you want to go in terms of weight loss versus weight gain. If you want more of this kind of information, I've got bonus findings and more goodies over on my Patreon, so check that out if you're interested. And if you find these videos valuable or helpful to you in any way and you want to support me in making these videos, then again, there's the Patreon or for one-time support, there is the GoFundMe. So both of those are linked in the description below. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please hit the like button and share it so that other people can get this information and learn that they might be able to nudge their weight around just by changing their eating speed. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.